So you are playing black, sure. you cut, then he played the leather. Yeah, now it's your turn, right? Yep. So what to do? Uh, I was just going to play <clears throat> L12. Yeah, that's the most natural move. Get out of there as fast as you can. Yep. No more uh, poking moves. The, the Pokemon song. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen that. You were very excited about the, the poke move. <laughs> <laughs> some some pokey was... moves are good. <laughs> yeah, it was just for fun. Yeah, um, it was very controversial on Reddit, <laughs> though. Like, it's like I don't know. It's like you're <laughs> writing a a new uh, go hit song. <laughs> well, That's exactly what, what, hap what happened in the lower left corner? This D four and C six. That looks like uh, he played two times there. Yep. You were fighting a core or something. No, um, how, how did he, he approach? He approached G3. Oh, um, he, and he started to, to play I, a poke move. Yep, I played a Kosumi. Ah, so, yeah, uh, or excuse me, a Kama. Yeah, and then he went under and I ignored. Oh, okay, and I played in the right hand side. I see. And then he, he played the, the splitting move at C5. Well, when he plays and... C5, you should just block once and let him uh, struggle. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, I got heck for it from chat. <laughs> I can imagine. It's like like you were fighting a coin, you let him play two times, boom, to separate that. Yeah, That's uh, painful when it happens. So anyway, what to do with that chain of stones that looks like a snake, a small dragon? I'm, lo I'm looking at P11 just to take some profit. P11. Mm, your group is still weak. I think you should, you should peep one time at 014, make him heavy a little bit. See how he reacts. And you can probably oh, okay. build while you're trying to, to attack, but you're the one who's pretty weak here. So if you just play away on the right side, Q11 or P11 to build a lot, I think he'll cap you right away at L10. And then the entire group in the top is in danger. So you don't you don't have the the luxury to play away. Gotcha. Okay, now the sound is, uh, the sound is good. Okay, perfect. Um, so maybe. So you gotta play nor I'm... normal moves. <clears throat> I'm looking at J18 to potentially form a small base, and then also mm. the K11 diagonal. No, no need to play J18 right away. You should just play where he okay. wants to play. So jump out, be one step ahead, try to, to get out of there as quickly as possible. And then if he doesn't answer this, you're going to cap him. So he might jump too. And then he has a weak group in the top and a weak group uh, Kido Cup. Ah, I think Kido Cup has two tournaments. One is the uh, top eight tournament, the main group. And there's another tournament for um, everybody. It's an open tournament. So he entered the right side, but actually that's a little bit dangerous. Oh, you gotta play quick. Don't lose on time. Play a Q10 move. Oh, oh sorry, I just ah, okay. clicked what I was that's thinking. That's also possible. <laughs> but you you can also play a peep or something just to um play a play a time suji, a kikashi. Let's see what he plays. Mm -hmm. You could play Q10 and then try something else. I'll just block him. Okay, so now you have time. This is actually so you have 25 minutes for uh, 25 moves in 10 minutes. Now he's trying to hurt you, but it's not so easy for white. Just a Tari at K11 and then connect at K12. That's what I would normally do. Yeah, yeah, do. it's good. Block and connect, and then if he cuts, you connect. He goes out, and then you fight. It's okay because with this kind of uh, cut. White just ended up with terrible shape. The the soldier's hat, or whatever is that called, those four stones. That's, some, that, that's something you want to avoid. Tetris shape, yep. <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte's head shape. Ah, this peep just removes his own liberties. But look, looking at the position in the lower left, it's like watching a game of AlphaGo. 
I think you can use those two stones to try some magic on the left side. But first, you gotta solve this. So stay connected. If you fix your group in the middle and even counterattack his group, then you can take care of other important things. Mm -hmm. Kido Cup is really big, they have nice prizes, and so is the Berlin Grand Slam. But the Grand Slam is invitational, so only 12 players can play in the main event. And there is also a side event, or probably even two, like a team championship. Oh, this move, how center is this? Park, 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 park. Uh, probably it is. If he cuts, then you have a problem with the cornerstones. Yeah, I think you have to, to defend. <clears throat> All right, so I, I guess he's looking at the cut at K10 and then extend and try something over there. Mm -hmm. But you should really test him a little bit with the peep at O12. Oh, number 12. So here are the informations about Kido Cup in Hamburg. Which is nice, they also have a, a very nice sponsor. So good conditions for this tournament. Mm -hmm. He fights back. So if you push, I mean, if you block, he turns Hane Hane. Interesting. I wonder if you can play O16 in center, but it's not really center, so you better don't. But you can you can play O11 or P13. I guess P13 is the the first move that comes to mind. Just block. And, yeah, that's what yeah. I. Was. It's fine, but you gotta read a few moves ahead. When he cuts, you go out. When he turns, you have to go out again. <clears throat> oh. He played peaceful. Now what? So just P12 is fine, yeah. I think. So you're 9Q plus again? Who beat you? <laughs> Who beat you so bad <laughs> since last time? It's, it's, a few, it's a few really people, weird. Huh? Like I, I had a day where mm. like I lost four games, I took an hour break, and then I won six games. Oh, okay, the break, the break um, helped. <laughs> you... I, I don't know, so it's just... yeah. I go up and down, apparently. Yeah, maybe you're a little bit uh, in, a, in a route. I had this kind of uh, I mean... barrier at 11Q maybe, and then up to 1, 2Q, I was fine. After I managed yeah. to break through. I... So was the... I keep bouncing back and forth between 9Q plus and 8Q. Oh, I see. So... Well, once you, you break this through, then you'll probably jump to like 4 or 5Q in a few weeks maybe <clears throat> yeah it's really weird like at my go club i'm i'm winning against the four and five cues uh -huh. nice. at even games so i don't know if it's just but yeah like yeah. i'm used to their play style or on on i just the uh, mid queue players are probably stronger than many other ranking systems <clears throat> okay. q q10 you gotta play here that's the natural move i have a student okay. who is seven q here and when he plays on um Fox, for example, he can beat two Q or one Q, something like five out of six games. It's quite impressive. Mm -hmm. So, what's the natural move here? Yeah, you gotta make good shapes. I was looking. <clears throat> yeah, it's looking at O seven. That's not a very good shape. N seven, it's a nice shape. Okay. It's, it's a more flexible shape. O O seven looks okay. a bit heavy. Because if he pushes now 08, okay. you block 07, and then all of a sudden the bottom group is in trouble. Gotcha. Well, Fox is weak up to 7 down, then it becomes challenging. <coughs> um, and it has some. I think I can. Yeah, just block. R9. Like the Hane at R9? Yeah. yeah, okay. I noticed recently that it, there are some um, AI you can watch on Fox. One of my favorites is Ben Sondar. It plays similar to AlphaGo or Fine Art, but in a way, it's more human-like. 
it takes the, the time to, to play for a move, not playing instantly. And the shapes this bot makes are very similar to Japanese style of play when they were beating everybody, like, I don't know, 34 years ago. Okay. In the early 90s up to maybe like early 2000, Japan was really spectacular in the war scene. And I like to watch that bot. But mm, it's confusing. If you watch uh, those AlphaGo games, the self-play games, probably you know those from uh, the YouTube series commented by Redmond. Th yep. Those are confusing even after you see the variations and the, uh, the reviews. Yeah, I, that's <laughs> one of the reasons I stopped watching them. <laughs> good, good decision. <laughs> so, crosscut. <clears throat> Usually when you see a crosscut, you need to extend somehow. Yeah, I feel I was reading this out and I was I was reading the O9 Atari or the P9 Atari. If you P9, he will Atari and, from um, behind either Q11 or P10. So you you uh, better go P11. Uh sorry, Q11, not P11. Just no B. Extend that way. Yeah. And then even if he plays Atari R8 or something, you can go down and turn and then you're fine. You keep the entire right side, and he's still struggling. So this group in the lower right corner, <clears throat> if you manage to surround it somehow, maybe at some point you can play a move like M5 or N4 or M4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He found an interesting move, but there are not too many options. Just keep it connected. <clears throat> uh, then he can live in a core, but that's quite painful for him. Here you don't have too many options, just block. Yep. I was looking at the Atari and then Atariing the three stones and what happens there. Which Atari? Ah, if he starts from Atari, you mean? Yeah. Well, he played an Atari, but I don't know how much this one will help him. Yeah, I can just connect. He's going to cut now. I think the I think difference sure. between playing on the real Go board and playing online is that you see the, the board totally different. Online you see it vertical, on the real Goban, in tournaments you see it horizontal, so that makes a difference already. I'm thinking <clears throat> K9 <clears throat> first? Or that no, no, hurts yeah, that hurts your top group. Uh, he's okay. looking to, to hurt you on the right side. I think you should play one Satari L7 and then capture that stone at P9. Because if a semi starts with the top group, Okay. <laughs> yeah, then uh, maybe you have a better chance to to kill the top, but we will see. This will be one of those games where you kill the guy with 120 points. Ooh, Atari. <laughs> Just take. Yep. He can't do anything here. I guess he wants to cut uh, R7, but how? Pom, 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 pom. I wonder if you need to answer this or not. Uh, if you don't, he takes the call, it becomes tricky. Yeah, just connect. Okay. <clears throat> so, is this a two handicap game? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yep. He really has to try a, a fight with the top group somehow. Or at least try to leave with his uh, middle dragon. So in general, what you need to remember is that when you're in danger, you simply jump out. You got to trust the Iken Tobi, the, the one, one space jump. So now he's trying to, to set up some ice. And actually uh, here... My instinct is to play P15 instead. Instead of connecting. Uh, yeah. I, would, I would just play J10. And if he goes out, you can net him and let him take the stone if he wants. You can even let him leave. Because if you... When yeah. I... Oh, no. Yeah. This is extremely okay. proper. And if you're strong here, well, you can uh, kill the lower right corner or set up a call and then use those stones at C6 to, to start a fight. Oh, that's strange. Now you can play P15. It feels like a Tesuji, but actually it's not. If he takes the call... You capture the stone, and then he has a false eye. 
Okay, so now he's trying to Atari boom boom, but this move doesn't work at all. You can play R12 or R13. Which one you like? Good. Yeah, R12. This, this is better. I because, have my mouse over it already. Yeah, so. <laughs> you kill you kill him in uh, in two moves. Tight, it's good. It's good to capture what you can capture without leaving RG or with good RG instead mm -hmm. of bad RG. Did you read any uh, Go books recently? Uh, I just started Kato's Attack and Kill. Uh huh. That's nice. And I've and I'm I've just finished uh, Lessons in the Fundamentals of Go. Oh, that's a good one too. With their end game part. Art. Yeah, yeah. And I'm that's... slowly working through the um, concepts, the Chinese oh, opening. Okay. The the one written by Kato Masao or which one? R R thirteen here. Just take. Don't lose don't lose okay. on time. The the Chinese Chinese yeah, opening I... the winning strategy or uh, by by Kato Masao. Yeah, Mas yeah, now. that one. Uh -huh. Yep. That's a good one, but the new variations played in the Chinese opening are a little bit uh, different. We can say that book, it's a little bit out of date, but um, it has some uh, nice basics and fundamentals about how to play Chinese opening. I like to watch games where people play Chinese opening and San and say, but I almost never play myself in tournaments. For some reason, uh, here you got to play J8. I feel that when you play uh, Chinese Fuseki or when you play Sun and say Black is just got it at the third move and it's losing initiative so early feels a bit uh, strange. At least for me, I don't know. I like to be more active in okay. Fuseki and attack. And it's uh, as Black, it's a bit uncomfortable to play against six and a half or seven and a half Komi. So you gotta play more active. What to do here? Okay. Eight, I think. Mm -hmm. Keep it disconnected. Yeah, separate. Is that Sante? Uh, not really. I didn't think so. so. <clears throat> Let's see here. If he takes the stone, you take the those two. Uh. He doesn't want to leave in the top stretch. Let, let's try something on the left side. Don't answer this. Oh, okay. So you can use those two stones, setting up uh, an interesting uh, co-fight. For example, you can play B5 Hane. I think he'll just uh, block. Here you need to play uh, to try to s set up a sabaki or some kind of light shape in a few moves and escape. That's one of the okay. basic strategic concepts of Go. Now you can attach C8. So the thing is to, oh, okay. to be very uh, fast. If he takes a stone, like here, you just play one Atari and you can get away. Now, uh, mm -hmm. either D8 or D9, or attach. You can even attach C10. You're strong in the center, so now you can escape. Hmm. And then you can hurt his stone on the left. Well, if you just connect here, he will cut you at C, C9, and that's a bit dangerous. So you need to play something to protect against the cut at C9. And that can... Yeah, I was looking at C10. That's an option, yeah. C10, C9, B9. Yeah, but that seems pretty active. Well, he will go up, and then you gotta jump. <clears throat> oh, he's worried about yeah. that one stone. So, you need to find a good shape here to hurt that C11. Okay. I guess just playing in the middle of the elephant's eye, D12 kind of works. D, uh, I think if you play D12, you will go uh, D11. So you better hunt a D11 or B11. But D11 usually making the tiger mount when he doesn't stand. Yeah. That's very good. Uh, okay. 
So now Atari or what? You're already alive here. So the invasion was quite successful. But it's big to play C12. Okay. Maybe he dies with this top group too. I was yeah. trying to decide between the wedge at D thirteen uh, and then C twelve. I think if you if C twelve just seems to yeah. work better. Um, <laughs> if you play D thirteen, he will go Atari D twelve. You connect, and then he can Atari E eleven, and then he connects all the stones. And well, I don't know if we use full strength against this particular opponent. So here it can be a little bit dangerous. If you play B13, he can cut uh, B14. You got to take a connected B12. He will push. Then you need to jump in the corner. Then he pushes, he turns, and then it's a semi. You don't need that kind of headache. And right. <laughs> if he goes C18, it can be tricky too. But I think we should do something about his 05. Oh, over there now, okay. Yeah, I don't uh, think he can kill your corner. If he starts with uh, C18, you just hunt a B16 and connect, and then either connect under or leave locally. So you still have plenty of liberties. Okay. But here, well, he's captured at L8, it's Sente. Also, probably you need another move in the top to, to kill that group. Hmm. I don't know how to attack this one. Just I've been, N5 cut. I've been looking at M18 for a while, and then also the N, N5, like you said, yeah. Yeah, that attach looks okay. Okay. Because first of all, you need to separate these groups. And then if you hunt a Q2, well, if you hunt a P2 and you block and he goes down P1, uh, that will be a co-kill. Because you have R1, the vital point, the eye stealing Tesuji. Oh, that's a pretty good move, but you have a counter to Suji here. Instead of cutting directly, ah, cutting directly works too. What to do? I was thinking P5 to be more fancy. <laughs> yeah, let, uh, let's try. Yeah, my initial thought was, let's try this to Suji P5. Okay. At least you learn a new move, a new way of poking. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is. Just cutting, in fact. So which Atari he plays? Up or down? Doesn't matter? Mm, yeah, he will be cut anyway. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's his choice how to fight uh, more. I think he has a call. If he goes P6 and you play Atari, and then he takes a new Atari, he can fight a little call. Ah, it's the same thing. Because now you cut O4, he captures, and then you cut again. Yeah, it's it doesn't really change much. Forced. So now he'll cut you. Yeah, and you have to take the call by principle. First taken. Okay. Let's see his threats. Uh-huh, yeah, that's his. <laughs> but you have local threats. You can just go out. And just take the call. Maybe he tries something on the right, like R7, S8. Oh, now he can um, attack the top left corner a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Ah, not such a great threat, because you just Atari and that's it. Yeah, it's only AlphaGo who doesn't take the call first. For some reason, he has a weird way of playing. Go, go, uh, go. Just 
Then they get on here. Not much to do. And take the call. Because then you have more local threats like N2, Hihane, you connect and he's in trouble. Mm -hmm. Not too many liberties that maybe while fighting the call, you're going to kill those L6 stones in the process. Yep. Yeah, that's right. AlphaGo has many weird decisions. Or maybe they are so deep that we don't really understand what is going on on the board. Oh, that's such a minus. You just turn and the core, it's actually gone. Uh huh. Trying to link under. It's connected. Yeah, just feel the core. Yeah. And then you push. And then he probably dies in Kotea. Oh no, you still need another move. But you need to move to avoid the co-fight. He can play P2, then you block, then he plays O1. I mean, you push through O2. Mm -hmm. And when he plays O1, you need to find a move to kill him unconditionally. Oh, here too. This is the J group. I think we talked about this before. This is one yeah. of the basic life and death situations. So what to do? Oh, I think I messed this up last time too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually here it's a bit tricky with all these outside stones. But anyway, you need to yeah. hunt in the corner first, T3. And then hit the vital point. Yeah, S1. And if S1, S1 is the key move. Yeah, otherwise he will okay. play S1 and he makes an eye at T1 and an eye at R2. Okay. So what happens next? If he plays S2 or this one, you just descend Sagari as Issei pointed out. O1, that's a Sagari move. And now if he connects P1, trying to make an eye, you play Atari R1. If he plays R1, you force his eye at P1. So either way, there's only one eye. Very important to remember the, okay. the Han at T3. Well, the proverb says there is death in Hane moves. So many times when you try to kill a corner, you start from Hane to reduce the space from the outside. Then you hit the vital point, like S1, and then you descend to reduce the space more. And he's okay. shrunk to one eye, that's all. So he died here. I think he's still dead in the top. It's difficult to leave even if you let him play something like L18. And yeah, that's the end for for white. Ooh. <laughs> this this is actually doesn't do anything. Yeah, this is actually Gote. He died in Gote. It happens sometimes. So new new targets. You gotta find a way to attack this uh, K5 group in the middle. Actually, you can try to kill it in two moves. Let's see the combination. Uh, I guess I would probably start with J6. The, the, and the, then the do... peep, the poke. <laughs> yeah. That's good, yeah. And then? <laughs> and then I would move to... Then it's a, a net you got to set up. Yeah. But not, not J4. J, J6 six. is good, but J4 not so great. Something else. Probably H4. H4, work. yeah. Good. Okay. Task solved. Ooh, he wants to leave. Now you gotta kill this one. So first, block him and reduce the space. Then let's see which vital point you gotta hit. I go back to the first move for a second. I want to see something. Ah, I think okay. I can S S ten after this. Oh, okay. When he plays C five early, you should block D five with your eyes closed, and okay. then play other moves. <laughs> <laughs> and when when he played on the right side, Q six attach. You don't have to counter attach at R four. You should Hane Q seven, or wedge Q five. Usually Hane Q seven. Because when you play the attach, like you did at R4, 
he's the one who plays r5 uh he wedges and then you have cutting points to protect okay he resigned yep yeah you, you can open this in a uh, review mode for a couple of minutes sure just to, to look at two things in the lower left and lower right corner and then start one from scratch and if you're black we can uh, play a Chinese opening let's see how that works for you <laughs> like Kato Masao when he was still considered Kato the killer so just play d5 oh you you have it up hang on yep sorry no I need to join uh, I'm pretty slow I'm getting old <laughs> I'm, I'm so I'm slow <laughs> like my machine <laughs> As I recall, you're a couple years younger than I am. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, then. All right. <laughs> yeah. You, you should block D5. But still, okay. my reflexes are going down. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not really. I played ping pong earlier, and I'm like a Chinese monster. Ch Chinese dragon. <laughs> so, yeah, D5 you should. And then go ahead a little more. D5, you got to play by reflex because you want to keep your source connected. And yeah, here. So you ignored. Ah, uh, that looks good for him. Oh, okay. So for, stop for a moment. Instead of this L3, you should surround him at P5. That's also pretty good because you have a triple approach against the corner. Why, sh oh, why yeah. shouldn't allow the tri triple Kakari? Like you shouldn't allow his uh, D5. So you both made a fundamental mistake here. But yeah, gotcha. in, you, you chose your corner, he chose his. So back to the game, you had L3. This, is, this feels nice to surround his stone. Even if he can play R3 la later, leave small, it's nothing. Now, yeah, okay. you extend it here. So he played Q6. When he played R4, R4, he will always wedge and create cutting points. So he becomes strong. That's why you better play Q7, mm -hmm. the Hane. Because anyway, okay. on the bottom you're strong. So now you're interesting to uh, develop on the right side. Now he'll go out P6 or block R5. R5, it's already painful. And here you push R5, which is the wider point. Because you're looking yeah. to cut, you try to avoid the tiger mount and so on. Now he might play yeah. R4 or attach O4. But let's say if he plays R4, and you don't even have to try to push and cut and everything. You just extend on the right side, R10 usually. And then, then okay. he has to worry about the cutting points. So he'll play O4 or P3. If he plays P3, you just go up. So your shape, it's okay on this bottom side with this group. And then he still has... Yeah. No, no. He has okay. P to, to play P3 because this move, you can still gotcha. uh, take away the base. And here he needs to go Q5. Because with Q5, he's connecting and he's threatening to cut at R7. So he fixes the corner. But you don't care about that cut so much because you can Atari under S7, S8... And connect, you're fine. You maybe lose the stone at Q7, okay. but it's no big deal. And now you're center, and you look all over the board, and you try to play uh, a big point. You can play K16 or K17. You can play something like C14, or you can use the edge of these two stones in the lower left corner and go B5, connect. You should play this actually okay. to save some face for that uh, losing the <laughs> one of the stones, and then B4. And then just connect solid B6 because then there's a cut at C4. So he plays either C4 or E4. I think he has to play C4. That's proper. If he goes E4, you would push in center. And then you extend to the left side at C10. So it's not so bad. Oh, all the way to C10. Yeah, okay. because your position is stronger now. You have C and B6, so you can extend three spaces away. If he jumps in at C8, you connect under at B8. If you Hane, you cut. He Atari, Atari from the outside, and it's okay. You can fight. If you go just C9, that's a little bit over concentrate. So now if you look all over the board, he's got this lower uh, left corner and lower right corner, about 10 to 15 points, maybe like 15 points in the lower left and less than 10 in the lower right. So altogether, let's say 25 points. But you got a nice left side, uh, a pretty good right side, and the top is still open for uh, fights. So overall, you're doing well. You keep the advantage of the, mm -hmm. the two handicap. And you also have this group on the bottom side, splitting his groups. And if you just think that you remove D2 from the board and you remove D4, that's not such an unusual corner shape. So if you take out okay. your move and his move, the, the corner will be like 15, 
towards to 20 points, but it's it's fine. After white investing gotcha. five stones there, so it's a really mm -hmm. good start for black. This is what you have to to think about in Fuseki. Look all over the board and try to imagine some scenarios like this, and see how you look overall. Okay. And then your opponent will be desperate. He starts invading, and that's how he keeps dying. New game. Let's gotcha. let's start from scratch. <laughs> All right. So let's see if you if you manage to to get a, an even game. Ah, that was quick. Yep. And you're playing white, so no Chinese opening. But you can try some other stuff. AG play some early suns. <laughs> well, I would English. normally play. Mm. I would play normally four fours as white. Yeah, that's so. fine. But then you can invade some of his uh, corners. Yeah, double hole sheets, okay. It's a very proper start. Okay. Now here, you don't have too many options. Yeah, I was looking at just uh, C7, or C6, excuse me. C6, yeah, that's common. Hmm. <clears throat> he can go for Kobayashi Fuseki at K4. Yep. Oh, wow. That's brave. <clears throat> so he, he's trying too hard because normally from F3, he should either slide and extend or extend directly J4, K4. So what are the ways mm -hmm. to, to think about the punishment here? Um, I'm looking at taking K4. <laughs> or even, yeah, it's um... possible. But what what about just L3? And then you can extend left and right. Okay. You have Mi to to yep. play a two two point extension to both sides, to both directions. And his shape is kind of over concentrated here. So you got to make the base and he'll probably take a Shimari. Ooh, wow. This feels like he's misclicking. <laughs> very unusual style of play and actually here on the bottom if you play something like h4 and he protects h3 then you separate uh, f4 so his jump at f6 is a little bit too loose but you don't have to do it right away and on the right side he was supposed to play q6 uh, q5 or r5 and in order to punish that maybe you should uh, just go under at r6 because if he plays another move like r6 his corner starts to look good and if you play R6, okay. uh, you try to punish his P6 and make it look floating, which is going to happen. Uh-huh. That's not such a bad move, actually. Can I just cut at Q5 then? Or... Ooh, directly like that? Let's see. So if you play Q5, I guess you expect him to push P5, but he can also go out P4. And then when you push through, you hurt your O3 group. Okay. So you probably want to fix a base without hurting your stones. So you, nice. you can play R8, attach and cross cut, or let me see if you can go R3, S3. I guess R8 is good enough. Just, just okay. attach, make a base in that direction. He's probably aggressive and he blocks. And now we can show him something interesting. You can play Q7, and when he blocks, you don't play any Atari, you just go under at S9. And let him play Atari, and then he'll be like, where to connect next? So without any Atari, you just go S9. Because you're threatening to double Atari next. I think here, he might have the reflex. Oh, he knows. He didn't play S8, but this is good for you. You just go S10. In general, it's good to... Uh, Resist the temptation of playing Atari. Some Ataris are usually unnecessary, like this one. This is losing a lot of RG, so it helps you. And then he blocks R5 and Yohane. Ah, oh, he didn't even do that. R5 is big. You should play it. Okay. Well, it's common for people who have some experience in the game. So you're okay on the right side. Yeah, I... this is. The sequence is new to me, so this is good. Yeah, <laughs> can imagine. So now you gotta do something with this group. 
testosterone. Because um, he's I pretty would strong. Probably jump at L5. That's fine, yeah. Why R5 over jump? Uh, R5 gives you a base on the right side and takes away his corner, and he could play R5 and S4 to to try a little squeeze and keep the corner. So R5 felt quite proper. Now here you have two options, connect or block M3. Connect, I mean L4. Let's see, let's uh, see which M3 is... M3 seems to work out better for me in general. So if you play M3 and he pushes and you block and he cuts, then you squeeze, he goes Atari, you go Atari, Atari from behind. But then we probably lose the AG around G, F4 and so on. And he's already strong at P4. So if he cuts one stone and he plays lots of stones around it, it's no big deal. So you, okay. you can just block L4 here. Yeah. But if you want to see how the squeeze works, okay. you can play M3. Yeah, if you honey R5 and then he plays S4, you got to go back to S6 and it's still kind of painful. Now, there are a couple of moves you can consider here. I was looking at H4 and then connect. No, in order to use O3, uh, you can play either N5 or M5. M5 I like. Take away Liberty and then O3 is in the vital point. So if he goes out with N4, that's a, a painful shape. If he plays O4, gotcha. you can honey under. Anyway, you can honey under. And you should do that, M2, and give him a terrible shape. So he, he really invests a lot to cut to and capture that stone and connect solid. And now you have a stronger shape. And then you can uh, do some magic against the bottom stones. Uh, let's see, if you push one more time, he doesn't care. So now you have to do something with this wall and hurt his J3 group. Okay. Which move you said earlier? A H4? Uh, H4, yeah. Uh, let's see. But I might be able to attach on the inside at H3. Uh, that doesn't work so well here. H4. Okay. I think you should just play J5. Keep calm. And then think about oh, H2 okay. or other moves. And actually, with this move, you're also looking to, to cut him at F5. Usually, when you're in danger with a group, you just try to, to get out in the center as quickly as possible. So play a few moves and jump out okay. next okay that's a pretty good move for him but you still have uh, h2 and go up and cut and take all those forces to do it now now you should just jump into the middle something like k8 that's a nice shape and he played he okay. played four stones here but when you play something like d2 or e2 maybe e2 it's a bit too much d2 it's enough you still kind of put pressure on this group and he, and he also played all these uh, moves around O3, which are not very effective. Okay, that, that looks like a big point. But on the right side, you can enter R13, and in the top you can evade L17, O17. What to do? The, this J16 looks a little bit uh, overstretched. So yeah, it does. go L17. Okay. Because from L17, you can extend O17. If you would go O17, he would pincer M17 and help 16. Now, if he plays M17, you can jump out. That J16, it's under uh, pressure. And then you can enter in the corner R17. His M17 doesn't do much. So gotcha. normally, here he should play... Yeah, okay. He pincer him. He could play K K15. Let you approach the corner, fix the corner, and then... Being at K15, it's harder to attack. Okay. Anyway, L15 is natural. So yeah, ju just jump out. Yep. Because now you let him play M17, which feels good overall, but he needs another move like R15 to build something over there. If he doesn't play that, later you go, ooh, that's quite aggressive. Yeah. So what to do here? Um, I'm looking at N15 first. N? And then, yeah, like Nancy. Uh -huh. And um, and then ultimately splitting over at Q14. Um, 
if you play n15 right. he will answer probably uh o16 or he will uh, attack you more at k17 i think you should push and cut okay let's let's k15 and cut and fight a little bit oh okay separate and then we see maybe okay now he wants to set up a ladder so you gotta extend to the left because his two stones are in trouble the other two stones are in trouble and here your plan is to surround everything at f15 and then we gotta see yeah you should do that surround right away and if he tries to catch your top group with a move like m14 oh, okay just block you have a nice attach at n16 okay with this move he wants to connect under obviously so what to do k18 k17 it's oh, possible okay. to play k18 to from the shape point but he will play k17 you gotta block then he starts to attack you and now you gotta go out with those four stones so maybe in this case it's good to play n15 because you're okay. threatening the corner a little bit you you have to you have to look at these stones in the middle too oh he cuts how brave now how to fight this cut? Hmm. Don't lose your F15. And put pressure on the top. Yeah, I guess I can... Well, I guess I can take away Liberty and connect my stones by playing F16. Yeah, very good. And put pressure on his group. Well, he'll go out uh, F13. Ah, okay, just block. Tiger mount, it's usually good. Mm -hmm. And also e18, keep the pressure. He will probably leave here because he can play uh, h15 in center, and you gotta prevent the cray nest. But it's so right. painful the way he leaves. Uh, block. This way, it also gives you some um, options for the top. Ooh. All right, interesting idea. So, what to do? Well, I really want to play H17, but mm. I don't think it's it doesn't work that good yet because yeah. I'm not strong enough. Yeah, yeah, don't don't, don't try <laughs> that. You you better try to leave. So play something like P P17. Right. O18 O18 oh, doesn't okay. work so well here. Because O18, uh, you gotta go up, he will block, and then when you cut, he captures you, you play Atari and so on, but you make like one eye in the end. But with this move, if he covers P16, you push, and then you hunt under, he connects, and then you make some nice shape. Oh, if he plays this one, you have a couple of options too. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Mm. Just, just attach. I mean, N18. This will really make him suffer. Maybe he loses a lot in the top right corner. Mm, okay, just connect under. Okay, time to punish him badly. So first you play O17, threatening the two stones. Because you're threatening to, to make life. Then you push through, P16. And again. P15, and then you cut the corner, Q17 or surround. But push one more time is good. Mm -hmm. So now you gotta decide, oh, wait a second, there is also an interesting move here. If you play R16, then he goes out. Wow. There's a very fancy variation you can try with R16. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because if he connects and you block Q15, he will cut you now. He's, okay, like that, you just uh, block. And he will cut you R15. Oh, he doesn't. All right, then just S16. And now, wait a second, you need to play R13. You cannot kill the corner right away.
So about the top. Oh, now uh, soon you can kill the corner. Yeah, you can kill the corner. So think about the proverb. To reduce the space. Right. So probably T17. The other honey here. P19. Because you reduce him to oh, L shape. Okay. Now that's the L formation. This Q18, Q17, R17, S17. So when this happens, he's already dead. And if he plays S18, you go R19. If he plays Q19, now you hunt the other side at T17. And that force him into the bulky 5 formation. So now you just hit the vital point. Hane, Hane. And vital point is S19. Mm -hmm. So he's already dead as it stands. But he has so many liberties. And here you got to pay attention. Yep, I just have to make the triangle. It looks uh, like. The other Hane would kill too. But the idea is to play um, the the proper way, S14, or the most effective way. S14 is uh, the, a nice shape here. Well, if you make eyes with the group on the outside, you don't have to play inside and remove his uh, dead group. I think one Atari you should play a T15. And then capture T17. Well, you have plenty of liberties, but he also has a huge eye, which gives him tons of liberties. But now, if he doesn't win this call, uh, you just connect T16. And then when he plays S18, you go R19. So he has very few liberties like this. R19. Okay. You have plenty of liberties. Wait a second. If he takes this one, you connect. You have one, two, three. You block a lot. First of all, you should get rid of uh, H15 center. So play an Atari at F13. One Atari here. And now you can think about killing the top. Because H15 is not sent anymore. And, okay. and again, you can think about uh, the, the Hane. But... In this case, you should just push H15, reduce the space like this. All right, okay. Then which Hane to play first? K19 or F19? Uh, it looks like K19 will make the... The bar key? Start, start yeah. F19. <laughs> that was picked the wrong one. Jeez. You were 50. <laughs> I, no, it's okay. Either way, it's fine. But with K19, I think he would make a really big guy. And now K19. And then you really shrink him a lot. <laughs> You're trying to kill the dead. And now two options. You can play H17. And if he goes down J19, you push again. Or you can play J19, and if he blocks, you play inside, and when he takes... But it, it's better to start H17 here. Okay. Because then he loses liberties like this. When he goes J19, you take an inside liberty. When he takes the call, that's a little better than... Okay, but here you got to pay attention. He wants Atari, Atari, Atari. So you got to play a move to avoid the call. If you cut him, he will start the call for sure because he's got all those moves at E16. So now you gotta play either C18 or D18. Which one? C18 or D18. One or the other. Uh, yeah, I think C18 works. Yeah, that's good. Better. Uh, both are fine actually. D18 looks uglier, okay. but. Tuck, 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 tuck. Yeah, it, you're fine. And now age 18, it's a must. So he's pretty short with liberties here too. Take away a liberty a D18. Because if he pushes once again, it's Atari on three stones. He must connect, you connect. 
he has some liberties that way, but still. So wait a second, pog, pog, pog. A lot of blood. He has Atari, Atari. The turn in the middle. You should push once at D15. And then cut okay. him. Cut and go down. Cut where you can cut, as the guy said in Lessons in the Fundamentals, Chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Page 18 or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember, I read that book, I don't know, 22 years ago. <laughs> but there was a chapter called Cutting and Connecting, no? <laughs> yeah, there is. There is so, yeah. uh, uh, if he cuts here, how dangerous that is. Pom, 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 pom. They, yeah, Kagyama was strong. Pa, pa, pa. Capture the stone on the left, something like B14. Just descend. Oh, okay. I like that better than playing. But actually it's the same, because if you play C13, you need B4, B15, but you can also turn and peep and then take the stone. And that helps you a little bit in the center. In the center, he should try something around G13 and Atari, Atari, Hane, ah. He heard me. Is he in our call yeah. too? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know. Um, so I, I just need to Atari out. H13, right? yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. the guy Googled you. He found you on Discord. He put a spider. Okay. You never know these days. We are, ex you are exposed. Me... <laughs> yeah, somebody called me famous the other day. It was pretty hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> G G so I can uh, yeah, yep. And it's forced. You gotta play J eleven and connect. Yep. You don't have to lose those stones. Those are key stones. And connect solid. Then he'll turn. Then you have a little problem with the middle group. This is something. So how to protect? Some jump here, huh? Already. Yeah, I'm looking at L11. Yeah, it's fine. It, it's might... fine. Okay. Anyway, he's short with all the groups. And now, let's see and if you... Bamboo. No, you can play better than Bamboo. You can play a, a oh. Kosumi, Michael 12. Because with that move, you're threatening to capture the two stones. You connect at the same time, and then you can KM M9. So it's a triple purpose move. Uh, connect... L12, it still works to push through and cut the three stones. So this empty triangle, it's not really genius. And now Kema M9. So having M12 set up M9. Gotcha. And if he tries to cut you here, it's not so easy because you also don't want to lose the, the bottom group. Okay, he tries, but it doesn't work. Now M8, pull back. If you block, you're in danger. But if you pull back, he okay. will push, you can block. If you Hane, you Atari. Here you can block L7. And if he tries M10, you Atari and take that stone. You're not uh, in danger at M7. So you're fine. You connect the top, but here you gotta pay attention. Uh, Atari first, L10. Well, you don't really need that Atari, but anyway, you gotta play it because he will try M10, so. Gotcha. And then just connect M7. So you have tons of liberties with this large dragon in the middle of the board, which will kill the top M7. But you can also make some ice. Ice, ice, baby. <laughs> R R15. Uh, just... You're going to be vanilla ice today. <laughs> <laughs> So, one, two, two, many liberties. So, first things first, play N19. This is going to be, you don't want to play T14 because anyway, it's just one eye, so you got to win the semi. And it's a call in many steps for him. Because then, instead of taking the call, okay, here you got to connect. Then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine liberties, eight now. Wait, if you connect this stone, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, you can save this guy. Play M15 first. 
maybe sometimes it's good because you might kill the other the other group on the right. Okay. So then you can play inside that R18, and when you capture the core, he will be in Atari with everything. So R18. Yeah, the, okay. or, or T19. You you would you wouldn't fail with any move. And and then R19. And then again you play R18 or S19. Because the moment you, you take the core, he's in Atari, so... And play again inside. And now you can capture the core, or you can play away. Because actually it's a core in many steps. But take the core once. So he has to... Uh, hmm, he played a, a non-core threat. But wait, let's have a little fun here. You can remove the core at R18, but anyway he has to approach 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times to make it a direct core. So, first of all, you need some eyes in the middle. Play K6 Atari. That's extremely proper. Okay. And then... Just bump J4. So you have an eye at L6, you have an eye at K5. And with J4, you're looking gotcha. to play H3 and grab some more territory. So that's a proper way to leave. Ah, back to the core. Okay, one, two, three, four, all right, we don't care. Now play some big point. Uh, C9, for example. Maybe C9, yeah. yeah. And maybe soon when you go Atari F11 and so on, he's losing guys in that area. Then you can go D2, you can go H3. Yeah, we're trying. P P19. P2, I guess. Oh, P19? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take, take, take the call from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he needs to play a threat. You got a block, that's fine. Okay, now you also play a threat, like F11. I think the position is so good that even if you lose that large group and he uh, saves both his dead groups, he will still lose the game by a lot. <laughs> but he understood that. <laughs> yeah. Now this game had some interesting uh, shapes. For sure. Yeah, and also uh, yeah, a lot of ways to to punish his uh, overplays. Let's say reminds me of my nine Q days. But you got is you there, gotta go. Is, <laughs> is there a good uh, resource for like side Josekis, like the one around R uh. seven? Well, that was not really a Joseki. Uh -huh. It was more like a, a fight where uh, what you were trying to do is to fix a base for your weak stone, and in the meantime, mm -hmm. make him get a wall that it's actually not really functional. Because that, that wall is totally meaningless. He was facing your uh, base on the bottom side. So in the end, he right. played that cluster of stones at uh, entry to, to capture O3, and all the other stones around, they didn't do much at all. It, it was yeah. all neutral, more or less. So that's how you, you got to think in okay. terms of taking uh, the side territory, if it's an interesting area in, in that fight, and let your opponent have stones which are, in the end, ineffective. I think you should read the book called uh, Basic Techniques of Go by Haruyama and Nagahara. I may have a copy in okay. PDF. I can uh, send it over by email later. That That one... I remember when I was like, I don't know, 11Q, I, I read a book on fundamentals first, Lessons in the Fundamentals of Go by Toshiro Kagyama. That's a nice and fun read. And the, the next book I, I study was uh, this uh, Basic Techniques of Go. Actually, there's a, there's a fun story with that because I used to play with my uh, younger and older brother and they joined the Go club before I did. And they used to come home and give me 17 handicap at first. Then I improve a little bit, and I used to take nine handicap, and I got beaten all the time. But I, I was something like I don't know, 13, 14 years old, and my younger brother, two years younger than me, 11, and the older brother, two years older than me, and they were both much better than me at go. I mean, they were like 9Q, and I was hopeless 17Q, and they would they would crush me all the time. And I, I took this book from a friend of mine, uh, this basic techniques of go. And I started to read it when my brothers were asleep. So after I finished the book in like two weeks, <laughs> I challenged them. For example, with my younger brother, we were already playing on five handicap, but he would beat me all the time with overplays and so on. I, I couldn't really uh, beat his uh, crazy plays. And after I read that book, 
I crush him. I, I challenge him in an even game, and I, I really crush him. And then I challenge him again, and then I told him the secret, and he was in shock. And then they quit playing Go. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'll send you that book, and sure, I, I'm pretty sure you will uh, fight better against these time kills in the middle game. Because in the end, even if you play great Josekis and uh, everything is going well in the beginning, you you got to be able to fight these cross cards, these overplays and everything. Right. So you have a better uh, understanding of the whole board position. and But I think that book is a lot about uh, tactical uh, fights. So that will help you a lot okay. in these kind of uh, close fights. So next... Ne yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, ne next, that's what I have a challenge with. I'm pretty sure. Next week I won't be around because of the Berlin tournament, but in two okay. weeks I think on on Wednesday we can meet again. Should be fine. But okay, good luck on your tournament. Thank you very much and good luck with the the next games here. Try to promote, play good style, kill them with Hane. Remember a few of the things we talked about earlier in these two games. Absolutely, crush them. Poke poke when right. you when you take away the eye. <laughs> All right, <laughs> have a good session. And see ya. Yeah, have a so, great one. Bye bye. All bye. right. Like I like to remind everybody, uh, be sure to support Cornell. He does do his own stream, um, and also he does offer lessons. So if you are interested in lessons with Cornell, uh, connect with him on Twitch or connect with him on IGS and KGS. He's Cornell on both. He's also Cornell on uh, Tygem now. So uh, he does do streams uh, periodically on Thursdays. Um, and those are those are fun to watch because he's playing higher level go, um, and yeah. And if you want to, if you feel like it, I do pay Cornell for his time. So if you would like to donate to the stream to keep this content coming, um, I, I welcome that and appreciate it.